Marvel Superhero Squad for the Wii. I can sense the hate coming before I even start speaking here. Let me start by saying it's not the way it treats the characters. I I like to believe that I can be objective enough that even well for example I didn't particularly care for how silly Lego Star Wars was, but I still rate that game relatively highly in spite of the fact that it's not quite as dynamic and free as it may be um, would benefit from being. It's, it's still a well done game with few bugs and you know it's it's pretty fun and you know it it's had me coming back to it after I completed it which I'm not sure I was initially expecting to be doing I don't see that happening with this one I'm gonna try to save any comments I have on the on the humor and the jokes and the characters and such until the last part of this the simple fact is it's not a terribly good game the levels are very um, dull, mundane um, they really don't the, the game just really doesn't grab you and you know pull you into it and that's coming from someone who's read comics for yeah, I don't know, 10 years uh, you know um, several of these characters um, are among my favorites I should be able to I, I mean it should it shouldn't even be difficult for the game to just immediately, immediately have me hooked the level design is just flat and uninspired most of the time every area looks exactly like the area just before it and the area just after it and in some levels they do this thing where there's like several doors in one area and when you walk into the room once you walk into the room the door behind you will close and then you have to somehow open the next door and this gets really confusing way more confusing than it should be and that I think it's meant to be because the rooms look so alike. You have to look for that little one detail that's different from the room before it to be able to tell if you're even making progress or if you're accidentally backtracking. The levels are also too loosely connected to... I, the, the game has these storytelling sequences that are you know, like stylishly done um, in a somewhat interesting manner it's just... I mean, half the time you don't even know where the heck you are. How are you supposed to get into it when, when you don't really know where you are? And seriously, if someone can explain that Hulk opening to me, I'd be quite grateful. It makes no sense to me. The gameplay basically consists of you, you know, running around... Think Lego Star Wars. You're running around and you can smash some stuff and other stuff you have to like stand next to and like activate it but where Lego Star Wars had like you know plenty of different things you know and and in that one um, you know you can transform and you can you can build and you know do various things to proceed in this one all you do is walk around then you find something you destroy it or you stand in front of it and tap, uh, you know, hold down the, down on the pad, tap uh, Z until eventually it, until it activates or, or you shoot something or you navigate, it's just, it's so simple and so easy and so boring, it just, it feels like busy work or something, it doesn't feel like you're doing anything and I'd say most of that time is also spent like fighting and this would be good if the fighting was particularly fun but it's not. The The system isn't 
terribly good. You basically have two attack buttons, and then, you know, and you can chain, and you can do combos, um, and there's, there's finishing moves, and that's about it, and none of it's terribly... I mean, the, the, so, some of them have, like, um, the, the two attack types are uh, regular and then one that's ranged, and the ranged one is... Um, and, and some of the ones um, can uh, fire, like, you know, Iron Man, obviously, uh, or um, Silver Surf, various ones. You know, they'll shoot projectiles when you press the the ranged button. And, and this is... and that's pretty good. You do not, however, want to be aiming with the Wiimote, because half of the time, I kid you not, the projectiles will fly back... If you can imagine, back towards the camera, meaning back towards the player, yeah, it's and and you can't even see anything in that direction, you know. It and I, I mean when you're pointing at something at the screen, it'll he'll turn around and turning around also takes far too long for a game that's so with so much focus on beating your your opponents up and where not everyone can shoot. You can supposedly fly. I'd really say it's much more like levitating for I don't know, a few seconds, not terribly long. I'm not even sure there's a proper function to, like, gain height or anything when you're levitating. And the physics about the, um... And the physics surrounding the world object is just awkward, and... It, it doesn't really make sense. Like, you'll punch something and it'll, like, bounce as if it's made of rubber or something. I don't know. And, and every... And every level just um, has its own extremely obvious... I mean, the, the, almost everything in the game is like they made one, then they said, I love that one, make more, just, you know, put different colors on them, make them slightly different from one another, and that's it. Like, for example, when, you know, you can um, smash stuff and there'll be little pickups inside. Don't get your hopes up. It's basically just health and one that's... I don't know, little shards, and I think there's a bonus if you collect a certain amount, I don't know. And they're almost exactly the same for all the chapters. And the people, you, you know, the heroes you're controlling, again, basically the same. I mean, you know, some of them can uh, have a proper ranged attack, uh, some of them can levitate briefly, but there's not any real difference in, you know, how powerful they are. It, it's just extremely repetitive, um, all of, all of the game, really. Um, what I will say, apart from the, that regular type of levels that I described before, there's also this other kind where, basically, basically you're in, uh, an intense situation and you have to flick the Wii remote in a specific direction at the time it prompts you to do so. And you'll have, you know, I don't know, a second, maybe two, to do so, you know, to respond. And if not, you have to start that section over. Those are pretty fun. I will give them that. But don't go out and buy the game for that. It's, they're, they're short. They're over really quickly. You can't even skip to those specifically. You have to complete each chapter in, um, in its entirety. And each takes, like, one hour or so. So in total... You can beat this in less than 10 hours. I mean, we're talking, you know, Max Payne and Max Payne 2, or even shorter, that length, and and it's not even terribly enjoyable for the time you're playing. As far as I can tell, there's no proper guard function, and the game desperately needs it, because there, so much of it is... Well, real quick, there's two difficulty settings, and... Basically, the difference is I th there might be a little bit of 